And so far today, we've had some very heavy soaking rains over western sections of Tennessee. In fact, some evacuations were taking place earlier this morning around the Dyersburg area. Some very heavy, heavy rains around that area. Meanwhile, showers and thunderstorms, too, are popping across parts of the Plain States. And we'll see this trend continuing throughout the afternoon. In fact, the thunderstorms will get far more numerous across the Plains and across the southern tier of states as we progress through the afternoon and through tonight. And as we were mentioning, some of these thunderstorms could be quite powerful. They will be capable of producing some hail, very gusty winds, and a chance for some very heavy downpours too. So be careful today from Raleigh-Durham, Columbia, Atlanta, Georgia. And for those of you too vacationing in Florida, around Disney World, around Orlando or Tampa Bay, there's a chance too that you might encounter some strong thunderstorms later today. So here's the forecast. Our front slowly sagging down across the Tennessee Valley. An upper level disturbance too sagging across the south will keep it active. And still a chance for a few more scattered showers too across New England. So keep the umbrellas handy around Boston. Stay tuned. Current weather from coast to coast is coming up next. Sunny skies cover most of the northeast, but thunderstorms could pop up in the south. Find out if you'll need to keep an umbrella handy. Watch Weather Center next. Every day more people are choosing Lowe's. Heavy rains early this morning have hit central Alabama hard. Flood warnings in Jefferson County, including Birmingham, where two to three inches of rain has fallen. We'll check that radar out in just a moment. Thanks for joining us for Stormwatch, brought to you by Master Lock. Now let's take a look at the tropics. And with your tropical update, here's our tropical coordinator, John Hope. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everyone. Well, in the Atlantic, we're not seeing any tropical storms, and that's uh, good news, and we really are not seeing anything that looks as if it would develop into one very soon. The Caribbean has pretty well cleared out since yesterday. The tropical way that we followed across the Caribbean yesterday is barely discernible. Not much in the Gulf of Mexico either. Quite a flare up up here. Uh, this uh, once was a tropical way that we could follow across and now it's about stationary. It might even be nudging a little bit toward the east. We don't think that's going to develop any, but we are seeing a pretty good increase in the clouds and showers out there. And we have just one tropical wave worth mentioning out here, and that's way out there on the Atlantic. And we'll kind of detail all these. Yesterday we could see that tropical wave was uh, extending from Mo Honduras up to just east of Jamaica. And the remnants of it are still there, I guess, but the showers are very much scattered around as they are in the Gulf of Mexico as well. A lot of the Caribbean has beautiful clear skies. You couldn't find a better day if you wanted to be in the Caribbean. In fact, as we look at the eastern part of the Caribbean, from the islands from Puerto Rico down to Antigua, St. Martins, Barbados, St. Lucia, beautiful day, hardly any clouds there at all this morning. There might be a few showers develop over the mountains again in Puerto Rico. Typically this time of year it does that in the daytime, but uh, not much there right now. And here's that tropical wave way out here, looking a bit less organized, I think, than it did 24 hours ago. So if anything is going to come out of that, it's going to be very slow to do it. It's not going to happen right away. Off the coast of Africa, a pretty strong tropical wave came off the day before yesterday. And now we can still trace the low over here to actually a little bit north of west, I think, of the Cape Verde Islands. But all we have around the center is just a swirl of low clouds, and it looks as if that's going to come across the ocean. And that is about all it's going to do. Looking at the climatology now for August, we look for possibility anyway of storms developing way out in the Atlantic. But as we said, we don't see anything out there yet. Now, as far as August storms are concerned, if you want to take an average, we have an average of about two tropical storms in August. But if you have a very busy hurricane season, it's not unusual to have as many as four or five. We're just about the middle of the month now, so if we're going to get a lot of storms in August, they have to begin to show up pretty soon, which they haven't done so far. 
Well, out in the Pacific, it's been a little busier. In fact, we have a brand new hurricane out here now, just classified as a hurricane this morning. Uh, this is Georgette, a very well-developed storm, as you can see here, edging, though, toward the northwest, not getting any closer to the land. And we don't think this is going to be a threat to Baja, California, but you are going to watch it carefully because it is moving toward the northwest, not west, as some of these systems do. And here's the latest advisory, sent it at 14.2, 112.9 west and that's 625 miles south southwest now of Cabo San Lucas is moving toward the northwest about 12 miles an hour and the lowest pressure estimated at 987 millibars here it is very well defined indeed moving towards the northwest away from land not a threat to any land areas well they have some flooding rains in Alabama so let's go back to Mark Van Cuso and see what he has to tell us about that all right, uh, nice to see you in the mornings, John, and I uh, hope to see more of you. As we take a look at the current weather, we see beautiful weather in the Great Lakes and in the west. And in the west, boy, the heat is on. It's going to be hot in Seattle and Portland in the next couple of days. Maybe near record heat in Portland, Oregon. To the south, the rains have returned. Look at this, a trough over North Texas. Uh, what's all this about a heat wave and all the dry weather? Well, the weather has changed, and that's good. Not as hot, still steamy and some welcome showers and thunder showers. Now, as we take you into the Northeast, slow moving disturbance means trouble for vacationers who want to go off to the beach today, not a beach day, cool and showery, so a day to, to hit the outlets. Now, as we get you to the South, this is where we've had the problems with the rains, right here in Birmingham, Alabama. Let's give you the close-up view of the radar, and as we show you that radar from Birmingham and vicinity, this is Jefferson County. This is where we've had all the problems with the rain this morning, Walker County too. Heavy rain now easing southeastward, so the rainfall not as intense as it was earlier, but we did have reports of flooding in the area, and it looks like the threat for showers and thunderstorms continues. Yeah. I'll talk to you a little bit more about some thunderstorms building up from Florida actually toward the southwest, toward Los Angeles. Right now, though, on our tropical update, Dr. Steve Lines is going to tell us what's going on with our latest hurricane in the Pacific. Thank you, Rich. And uh, yeah, with that latest hurricane, it's not moving toward land, but it's going to give you surfers another treat in another few days. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let's look first at the Atlantic Basin and see how quiet it is. Good news for everybody that lives in the Gulf of Mexico. It's virtually very, very quiet there. Not much going on. We've seen a couple of waves move through the Caribbean the last couple of days, one right through here, and you can see it moves over here and just sort of fizzles out, which is great news. And out in the central Atlantic, we had we'd monitored a little low pressure center down here that ran into the South America coast. Great news there as well. But let's start out off the African coast in a little closer view, and let's, let's see what's going on out here. We've been monitoring a couple of African waves that have come off the coast the last couple of days. One, a very large stratocumulus swirl up here, and you can even see some signature of it in the mid-cloud, this gray area sort of mid-cloud. And at the southern edge of it, we've seen some cluster of thunderstorms here. Nothing developing, really, but uh, it's, uh, it's looking a little bit interesting. Here you can see it here on the uh, infrared imagery in the central, central Atlantic, and some hint of a little bit of organization starting to go on here, but you can see the very big stratocumulus swirl right out in this area. If we look at the colorized imagery, we can get a better indication of where the thunderstorms are, and you can see they're rather scattered, which is great news. There's no concentrated cluster of th thunderstorms in this system. So it's, it's worthy of monitoring, but right now we're not worried about development in the next 24 to 36 hours. Now in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, of course, we've had some very, very fine weather, the Gulf in particular, and uh, let's zoom in there and see what's going on there. We've had a surface high pressure ridge here most of the summer, so far with westerlies in the northern Gulf of Mexico, and that's basically shut off all the deep thunderstorm activity uh, from organizing anything, and that persists with a very, very nice weather there. Little tiny vortex associated with the geometry of the coastal uh, configuration down here in the extreme southern Gulf of Mexico, but nothing to worry about there. Now keep in mind as we, we go out into the season, virtually any place in the Atlantic is fair game for a tropical system to develop, but keep in mind from the 11th to the 20th on average, over the last 110 years or so, we've had 73 storms develop. That's basically a little less than one a year. So it's not all that common for them to develop, but they can develop anywhere. Now let's look a little bit closer at what's going on in the Pacific. We've seen uh, some very nice weather uh, off the Central American coast for a change. 
but here's our hurricane out here and this one's moving to the northwest not immediate threat to the coast here but it's starting to develop some very big uh, swell action in here that's going to propagate up into the Southern California area and I'll show you a picture of that in just a second let's get the statistics on it as of 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time location 15.1 north 113.8 west that's about 585 miles south southwest of Cabo San Lucas which is right here winds are 80 miles per hour so it continues to increase ever so slowly about five or ten miles per hour every forecast advisory and it continues to move toward the northwest at 13 pressure 983 millibars. Let's get a close-up view of what it looks like. A very nice banding structure in here. Looks like an eye there, but that's really part of the banding structure, not actually an eye yet. So we'll have to watch this, but very nice uh, circulation in there from the standpoint of satellite, uh, satellite beauty and organization. Now what's going to happen here as this moves up to the northwest is a lot of swelling here is going to propagate to the north, and the circulation is rather large and it's moving generally in the direction of Southern California. It's cleared the, wind, the magic window of about 113 degrees west for swell propagation up into that area. You should expect some swell beginning late Thursday and into Friday, lasting the entire weekend, and some uh, beaches could get surf as high as 20 feet, but open ocean swell will be on the order of five to eight feet as we speak. Well, let's get back to the United States and what's going on with severe weather and rain with Rich. Okay, thank you, Steve. As we look back across the country, the best chance of some of these heavy rains, possibly flooding conditions, will be in the south. Uh, certainly stride out a little bit around Birmingham after the two the two three inches of rain this morning. So the weather pattern somewhat is a little bit more favorable for drying trend shortly. Then the rain comes back on in because we still have that front to the north. We have that trough nearby with the low. So even though the atmosphere is stabilized shortly around Birmingham, you might see some more rain. Take a look at what we have right now in the southeast. Best chance of thunder showers actually are presently in southwestern Alabama. We have some big storms actually stretching back into Texas to California. More about that in a minute. Widespread showers soak parts of the south and thunderstorms are possible in some areas. When and where rain is likely next on Weather Center after your local forecast. shaving with soap in it. for storm watch as we continue to observe what is happening in the United States for some stormy weather, including some rainy night, a rainy night going on here across parts of northeastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, and into the areas to the west of Phoenix. But since this is the Atlantic hurricane season, we also focus on what is happening in the tropics to let you know if there's anything down the pike that may be uh, threatening the U.S. or other areas in terms of tropical weather. So let's start it off with our tropical update, and we'll show you what is going on and I'm pleased to report that in the Atlantic Basin, things are quiet as can be. In fact, not much to report at all here across the Atlantic Basin. Uh, you notice here, especially across the, the Gulf of Mexico and, and coming down into the Caribbean, not much in the way of clouds at all. We do have a frontal boundary pushing out over the coast over to the western Atlantic and a little disturbance here north of Puerto Rico but it's heading to the northeast now so nothing really causing any problems. Let's work our way from east to west here. We started off off the coast of Africa and we have our next area of showers and thunderstorms starting to emerge off the coastline south of the Cape Verde Islands. We do have a wave here. You can see it spinning as the loop goes through time and moving to the northwest. But notice that there's no convection associated with it. We don't see any bright white on the satellite picture and no colorized areas that would indicate higher cloud tops. So unless you start seeing some convection around it, we won't have to worry about it at all. Let's jump now westward to the coast of South America, right here. Notice not too much happening. Let me get out of the way here. We do have some showers and thunderstorms off the coast, but they're pretty far south. This is part of the intertropical conversion zone, and usually these storms are, are thunderstorms are not the area that we look for development of tropical systems. We're usually looking for them a little farther north. And we do have a little bit of cyclonic turning here. You notice that the the uh, the clouds here turn a little bit to the left 
as you're going around, but uh, no development out here. In fact, you can see no higher cloud tops, no bright white clouds. Really, the same thing can be said as we head into the Gulf of Mexico and into the Caribbean. And nothing much at all. Yeah, we have our usual stuff over the land, the thunderstorms that blow up during the day over the heat of the land. But over the ocean, very quiet. Lots of clear skies, both of the Caribbean and into the Gulf. So as long as we don't have any clouds out there, no tropical development is expected. However, that doesn't mean out of sight, out of mind. This is getting to be the height of hurricane season statistically. In fact, I was talking with Dr. Steve Lyons earlier and he was saying that about over 90% of all major U landfalling hurricanes that have hit the U.S. have occurred after this date. So we're not out of the woods by any means. In fact, you know, areas that have the higher likelihood of seeing land landfalling hurricanes on average are places that stick out into the Atlantic. Places like Cape Hatteras, the Florida Peninsula, and also over into the Gulf of Mexico with the mouth of the Mississippi. Anywhere along the East Coast and Gulf Coast of the United States is under the gun and could see a hurricane. So prepare now. Get that disaster supplies kit ready. Get some water stored. Get some food supplies stored. Batteries for the portable radio that you'll need to get information once the power goes out, if it should. Make sure that you have the plywood you need to board up your windows. Know where your evacuation routes are. Be prepared now instead of worrying about it when the hurricane is bearing down on you 12 hours out. We do have one hurricane to tell you about, but that's in the eastern Pacific and well away from land. That is Hurricane Georgette, latest advisory out of the National Hurricane Center as of 8 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Top winds now 85 miles an hour, heading northwest at 14 miles an hour, and centered about 600 miles south-southwest of Cabo San Lucas. And uh, a fairly hefty storm. It is still strengthening. No real eye visible on the satellite picture yet. It's likely that the uh, cirrus overcast is obscuring the eye, but you can see a very well-defined storm here circulating quite nicely. Outflow from both the north and south, fairly impressive. And the National Hurricane Center feels it will strengthen over the next 12 to 24 hours. However, as you can see, it is heading northwest away from land. Pretty much the only effect it's going to have on land is kicking up the surf along the coast of Baja and onto Southern California by the weekend. So surfers, wax those boards. You may have some good waves. Okay, we head back now into the United States, and we do have a lot of showers going on here across the southeastern U.S., over into the southwestern U.S. And as we look at our thunderstorm potential, we might see some stronger thunderstorms, even some severe thunderstorms into the northern plains as we go through the overnight hours into noon on Thursday with a new front coming in. Things really starting to die down here across much of the southeast, though, although we do still have some thunderstorms here in southern Georgia. As we head over into the Oklahoma area some persistent heavy rains here across eastern Oklahoma reaching down into northeastern Texas so watch out maybe some localized flooding and we've also been seeing some heavier rains here to the west of Phoenix watch out in this area for localized flooding showers are slacking off in much of the south for now but rain may return to some areas tomorrow a look at conditions in your area next on Weather Center you're gonna like kicks Trust me. I don't know. There's no candy in them. Trust me. They're good. There's no chocolate. Trust me. Why should I trust you? You said you would give me a good hair.